Hey guys, this is Audrey Steeman. A couple years ago, I saw a really cool ad or a spot or whatever um, that Oddfellows did for Nike Battle Force. And the techniques that they used in this animation was super, super awesome. They used a lot of spray paint, paper textures, scanning, very analog kind of techniques. And I thought that was amazing. And there's a certain part of it that I kind of wanted to emulate for one of my own personal projects. It's where they're kind of spray painting the Nike logo over and over again, but it's different every time. So that and kind of a stop motion-y look has a really cool effect in terms of animation. So in this video, I wanna kind of walk through some of the quick and dirty Photoshop steps that I use to, to kind of get that effect more digitally though. And I'll also kind of show some of the textures that I use to kind of enhance all of it too, as well as throwing all of it into an After Effects timeline to see what it looks like animated. So this is kind of the effect that we're gonna be going for, and it's gonna be different every time that you do this, and that's kind of the point to, to kind of randomize it. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is if you have your logo or your type layer, uh, preferably live type, just so you know you can edit it later if you need and you just have that as a backup, we're going to duplicate this. And then we're gonna turn this into a smart object. And then we're gonna set the blending mode to dissolve. And you can already see on like the edges here that it's already kind of got that grainy rough edged effect. Um, we're gonna kind of accentuate that quite a bit more. So the next thing we're gonna go to filter, go to blur gallery and field blur. So here you can already see the effect is kind of taking place and we're just gonna add a bunch of points onto this, onto this layer. And this is where you can kind of have some fun with really expanding out the spray of all of this. And then you definitely want to have some areas where there's little to none, uh, just so it kind of has that contrast and you can actually still, still read the logo or the, or the type layer. So I'm just going to kind of edit some of these points real quick. And something else too, you want to check your noise settings here in the blur tools area. Um, when it's on grain, this is kind of roughly the settings that I have. You can obviously adjust however you see fit, um, but maybe having like a little bit of grain that you can kind of see within the, the type here. Um, you don't want to make the size of the grain too big, um, but yeah, I just kind of have roughly the settings here. And you know, click OK when you have all your points set. And then I'm actually going to duplicate this layer again, but I'm going to keep this original one here just as like just kind of as like a template layer in a way so that you know if I want to make multiple frames of this then I can go into the blur gallery effect and I can edit the points to kind of randomize that spray again just so I don't have to go through all those steps again from the beginning so I'm just going to have kind of that as like a backup layer but then we're going to take this duplicate turn it into a smart object again and then we're going to go to filter blur and Gaussian blur and I'm just gonna do something between like three and 10. Then we're gonna go to filter again, noise, add noise. And I would say something not over 16, but maybe like eight, eight to 10 or so. And this, this adding noise step is optional too if you want extra graininess here. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on the smart filters mask here under this layer. And I'm gonna get a very big, soft brush. Make sure the hardness is all the way down and it's on black. And then I'm gonna kinda just tap some areas with the soft brush to kinda take away some of this graininess um, and accentuate other areas. And this again is an optional um, step too, but just to get some extra little bits of spray pattern wherever you want. And then the last step, this is optional, but if you want a flat color version of of this entire effect. Um, if you want to add a color overlay under the effects panel here, if you go to effects, color overlay, and then make it whatever color you want. I'm just gonna stick with this yellow. And now it's kind of a more flat um, colored version of that. Um, so obviously that's up to you if you wanna keep the graininess or not. Um, but I kind of prefer to have a little more flat. Um, and that is basically it. And then you can do this as many times as you want. Um, you don't have to have a background for this. You can just have it as a, as a PNG and you can just stack these as much as you want. And next I'll kind of show you some of the like textures and effects I'll put over this to kind of bring out the, the graininess and, and spray patternness, <laughs> if that's a word, uh, over all of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add this construction paper texture that I have. Um, I can kind of set it wherever, and I'm going to set the opacity to 65, and then set the blending mode to multiply, so you can kind of see that within the letters here. I have a couple grain textures here, you can set to like screen, 
but since this is on black it doesn't really matter. And then I just kind of layered a few of those on top. Something else that's fun that you could do, you could add a color overlay to all of the, the grain as well. So it could be the same color, like it's almost some like spray fall off in a way. So if I add that to the entire folder of, of grain, you can see all of it there. Which I think is pretty fun. And that's pretty much it. Um, again, you can change the colors of any of these. Um, I think kind of swapping colors as you add different frames of these spray patterns could be really cool if you're doing this for animation. Um, but this is just some, some easy texture stuff and even better if you have specific brushes that can kind of add some things to. These are from Retro Supply. And if I bring the size down quite a bit and then just add little extra bits of uh, splatter here that can kind of help bring that effect out even more too. So this is kind of the final that I used for my personal project uh, where I just kind of made a bunch of frames. Uh, I think I did each of them at like two frames a second. It's at 24 frames per second. Uh, so just did two frames of, of each kind of image that I made and some of these I totally blew out the, the spray paint effect and then some I kind of moved the position of the, of the type a little bit too. And then um, I actually inverted the colors here um, just for some visual interest and added some like framing elements, different spray patterns. I have a looping dust and scratches um, texture going on too. That's just a bunch of images, I think uh, three frames a second um, for one second and then just having that loop as well. And then set that to classic difference and linear dodge um, just to kind of get that transparency and overlap um, so it goes by pretty fast but but really if you just do the spray paint effect in photoshop a couple times and then just set it to a timeline you really can't go wrong with uh, having a cool effect with animation and it kind of looking uh, stop motion-y. So thank you guys again for watching. I, as always, hope this was super helpful. And if you found it super helpful, feel free to like and subscribe and all the youtube -y things. And I will see you next time. Bye.